Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about today on another Yamaha. I'm on the MT09SP. Some debate as to what the SP stands for. I think it might just be special paintwork. But uh, anyway, if you're interested in the MT09, stick around and stay tuned for the next few minutes because uh, I've ridden the standard MT09 uh, a while back uh, and now it's time to try this one with all the enhancements that the SP gives you. So uh, stick around and stay tuned. I'll give you my first impressions review of the MT09SP. So I mentioned I rode the uh, standard MT-09 last year, it's about June of last year, so about, uh, I don't know, nine months ago now. And I have to say there was uh, absolutely nothing wrong with that bike, I really enjoyed it, it felt lightweight, flickable, and uh, you know, perky, went very well. It's uh, a bike that I'm really interested in because I'm a big fan of triple engines, I own a Triumph Street Triple R myself. Uh, and this is a bike that I guess Yamaha built to have a bit of a slice of that particular pie. So this has got a uh, three-cylinder triple engine as well. Uh, it's, I think it's something like 833cc, uh, something like that. I'll give you the details when we do the walk around in a minute. Uh, but it's got uh, extra bits of bling that the standard bike doesn't have. And for about 800 quid extra over the standard bike, the main thing that you get, or at least to my mind, is enhanced suspension. This one's got really fancy Olin's rear end on it with uh, uh, fully adjustable shock. And again, I'll show you that when we do the walk around. Front end's got KYB suspension. Uh, and again, fully adjustable, as you can see on these little top bits here, uh, which the uh, standard bike doesn't have. So that alone is probably worth 800 quid. Uh, on top of that, it's also got a quick shifter, which is up only. Standard bike doesn't have that, I don't think. Uh, but that works really well, it all revs it seems. Uh, additionally you've got things like the special paintwork, as I said, the Heads SP. doesn't really stand for that, I don't know what it stands for. Uh, but it's paintwork that uh, is similar to what you've got on the MT10 SP and the R1M of course. Uh, and what else is there? Oh, and the uh, little dash on here is white on black. Which I think is different for the SP version, I think it's uh, black on white on the standard bike. So that's just something that makes it stand out a bit. So for the sake of an extra 800 quid, you get quite a bit extra for your cash. So I'll assume that uh, maybe you didn't see my original review of the MT-09 and uh, I'll go through this as if it's a, you know, a full first impressions review, just to give you an idea of what the bike's like to ride. And just as we go through town here, lovely West Wickham, I'll uh, just give you an overview of some of the practical stuff. So the first thing that uh, you notice when you get on the bike is it feels quite tall. It's not actually that tall, I think the seat height is something like 820mm, again we'll go through that when we go through the specs. But it feels a lot more upright than my street triple does. My legs aren't quite as in such a sporty position as they are on the street triple, and you're not as canted forward. Just to overtake here. Now what the bike does have uh, is oodles of acceleration. <laughs> Compared to the Street Triple, it feels quite a bit faster actually, just as I overtook there, the bike just leapt away. And I'm only in standard riding mode here. This bike has three riding modes, A, standard, and B. A, I remember, is the most aggressive one. That tightens up the throttle response and makes the thing go like stink. We'll maybe try that in a minute. Standard, as I'm in now for everyday riding. And then uh, B, uh, just makes the throttle response a little less aggressive. Uh, maybe you'd you know, think of that as a wet mode. Uh, it's also got traction control, which is switchable. Uh, is of course Euro 4 compliant, so it's got ABS as well. And it's, uh, it really is a lovely thing. It feels, um, to me, it just feels like an updated Street Triple, if you like. I don't want to keep harping on about the Street Triple on this review, but it's a bike that uh, is a great one to compare this to. Uh, this feels lighter uh, when you ride it, it feels faster. And dare I say, it's a little bit more comfortable as well. So I guess it sort of comes down to what you like the look of. The looks of this maybe splits opinion because it's got very much that sort of insect, androidy kind of look at the front end. I personally really like it, but uh, I appreciate it does split opinion a little bit. So back to the practical uh, points on the bike then. The mirrors on here are huge and they work beautifully well. They've only got little short arms, but actually you can see behind you really well. I've got a great view behind me uh, and I'm not just looking at my elbows and my shoulders, which is lovely. Of course it is a naked bike so you're in the airflow all the time but it's a uh, nice clean airflow i'm not in a load of turbulent air so it's not fatiguing in that respect you could tour on this no problem at all it's quite a comfortable perch you are quite upright the seat itself is actually quite hard but you can move around on it a bit to sort of change position and the way that the tank is shaped is really nice in terms of gripping it with your knees um, so that works really nice it's a comfortable comfortable spot the handlebars 
feel a little bit wider than I'm used to on the Street Triple, for example. It's more of a, a almost sort of a supermoto feel to the bike. Right, let's just try the brakes as I come into this 40 zone. Oh yeah, the front brakes work an absolute treat. And one of the things that you do notice about this is that whereas on the standard bike that had slightly lesser front end suspension, it dived a little bit when you braked. On this one, there's, there's much less uh, dive. The front end is a lot stiffer on this machine. It's not a KYB front end, as I mentioned, fully adjustable, but this is just set at the moment as it come from the factory. And to be honest, I can't feel anything wrong with it. The suspension on it is lovely. Now I was thinking as a, I'm just a, you know, a basic road rider, uh, and I thought, well, actually, the Olin suspension might be a little bit wasted on me. But actually, just riding on this standard road with, you know, the usual British potholes and stuff, you realise just how good that, uh, that new suspension is. It just irons out all the imperfections in the road. And even as a standard road rider, it feels lovely. I'm just coming into the national speed limit here. Let's just uh, change mode into aggressive mode. So you close the throttle, press the mode button. There we go, I'm in A now. And even in fourth. There's an instant improvement in throttle response. My goodness, it absolutely flies. Yeah, this bike is a lot faster than the Street Triple. Really strong acceleration. It's a beautiful thing to ride. I quite like the way that you change modes in this, just by pressing that mode button and closing the throttle, and you're in. There's no faffing about with using the clutch and stuff. It's pretty much as simple as it can be gearbox is lovely and smooth. The quick shifter on here works really nicely. It seems at pretty much all RPMs. Um, it's only up, unfortunately. It's not an auto blipper on the way down as well. I guess they have to make some differences between this and the more expensive premium bikes. But uh, yeah, that seems to work really nicely. This is a new bike with not many miles on the clock, so hasn't had a chance to loosen up yet. And I imagine that'll only get better. Clutch is lovely and light on here. I'll, now, I'll no doubt get criticised for uh, only saying good things about the bike, but I challenge anybody to ride this and not like it. At the moment, I just can't see anything wrong with it, other than maybe if you don't like the looks of it, perhaps. I suppose the switch gear, you could argue, is a little bit fiddly. Uh, you know, it's quite small. If you've got really big, thick gloves on, you might have difficulty getting at some of this stuff. But that's a minor, minor point, and I'm clutching at straws, really, to find something bad to say baby white van today. Step in the right direction. While I'm on the subject of white vans actually I might as well just cover this off. I have nothing against white vans or the drivers or indeed the valuable role they play in the British economy. <laughs> I had a few people <laughs> criticise me because of me always moaning about white vans. The issue I have with them is when they're in front of you on a bike you can't see around them so you don't know if there are hazards coming, you don't know where the road's going. Even with this baby transit ahead of me look I can't see what's ahead and that's really what uh, what I don't like about being behind white vans. I have nothing against them otherwise. In fact, I quite like a van myself, it has to be said. Anyway, hopefully he's going to be going straight on and I'm turning off. Bike feels really light in the corners. And super flickable. Man, she wants to wheelie all the time as well. You've got to be careful with it. The front end goes light as soon as you uh, tickle that throttle up. still in aggressive mode. If you're a wheelie fan, which I'm not, if I wheelie a bike, something's gone terribly wrong. <laughs> but if you're a wheelie fan, you're going to love this bike. I think even I could probably wheelie this one under control, though I'm not going to attempt it. Brilliant fun. Right, although just for now, for safety's sake, I'm going to change back to uh, standard mode. as we're coming into this bit of a uh, cruddy road here. Look at all the mud on here, this is just disgusting. This is a lovely shiny brand new bike as I uh, brought it out of the dealership. Hopefully I'm not going to take it back, absolutely caked in mud. Be a little bit careful around here because it's uh, still pretty cold out. It's only about uh, six or seven degrees and the roads around here are a bit greasy as you can see. The engine's got that lovely triple wine which uh, some people don't like, I personally love it. But it's not obnoxiously loud or anything like that. Although, as usual with Yamaha, there are loads of aftermarket, well, not aftermarket, official Yamaha parts you can buy for this, including things like exhaust. If you want to make it sound a bit more fruity, well, I think uh, she sounds just great out of the box, as it were. 
shame these roads aren't bone dry, it'd be a lovely risk for ripping around here. But this fourth gear feels as responsive as a third normally does. Let's try the back brake out of interest. Actually, the back brake is pretty good on it. Well, what a fun machine. I love it. I might even prefer it over the MT-10, actually. With the, uh, I rode the MT-10 SP a while back. I absolutely love that bike. But this just feels so much lighter, and lightness is always a good thing in a bike, isn't it? It's going to let me go. Thank you. Loving the handling. Right, here's my uh, one of my little walk around spots. Let's park up in here, show you around the bike, talk you through the spec. Let's pop it just here. Stand feels a little bit flimsy. There you go, there's something I can say that's bad about it. <laughs> Easy to get at, but just feels maybe it just needs a tightening up on this one. There we go, here she is. The MT-09 SP in the splendid SP paintwork. They call this uh, Blue, B-L-U. <laughs> I think it's called Race Blue, uh, but uh, I think it looks quite cool. Although to be fair, the standard uh, MT-09 with the grey and yellow wheels I also think looks pretty good. But yeah, really nice. All right, let me get the phone out and uh, I'll talk you through the specs. Come on, you know you're on a roll. Here we go. Here she is then, the uh, MT-09 SP in Race Blue. I think uh, looks absolutely splendid. Let me just open my visor. <laughs> get some air in. So yeah, I mentioned the bike was the uh, three-cylinder uh, engine. It's the CP3 uh, is what uh, Yamaha call it. Sounds a bit like CP30, so it's got, uh, I suppose it's uh, referring to the cross-plane technology. Not sure quite how that works on the triple. Uh, it's actually uh, an 847cc uh, unit. I think I said 830 before. Um, interestingly, the engine on this one is actually used as a stressed member uh, of the chassis, uh, which I think is a first for, for Yamaha, not sure. Uh, power output 115 bhp at uh, 10,000 rpm and uh, 87.5 newton meters of torque at uh, 8,500. Brakes wise, on the front it's got twin 298 millimeter discs uh, gripped by these four pot calipers, which are the Yamaha calipers. For some reason, they don't go Brembo uh, on Yamaha, but these brakes work absolutely fine. Uh, they look quite small, those discs, but they're, they're actually absolutely fine, as I say. Uh, on the back, it's got a single 245 millimeter disc, and this has got a single pot Nissan caliper, interestingly, on there. That works really well as well. Suspension up front, as I say, KYB uh, suspension up the front, fully uh, adjustable telescopic forks. They look great in the gold, and uh, there at the top you can see the adjusters. And then on the back end you've got the fancy Olins. Let's come around here and show you the remote adjuster. Here we go, look at that beauty, that looks nice. And that's probably worth uh, your 800 quid extra over the standard bike alone. And it does feel really nice even as a bog standard road rider, as I say. The seat is quite firm, 820mm uh, seat height, so I guess a sort of middling seat height, not too tall. Um, I'm only a short fella at 5 foot 8, get my feet down, no problem on it. Uh, and as you can see, the saddle is quite narrow at the front, so uh, quite uh, quite handy for us shorties. Wet weight, this is a good bit, 193 kilograms, so really lightweight bike. Let's come around and show you the front, because this is the, the looks I was referring to that I guess splits opinion slightly with that light. Uh, I think it looks great actually, sort of a waspish insectoid look. I think it makes the bike look really mean. Uh, tank capacity on here, 14 litres. So again, sort of middling type size and uh, you've got the SP paintwork on there, looks really good. Electronics, the those headlights that we just talked about are LED. Uh, inspired by the MT-10, of course. It's got switchable traction control, as I mentioned, ABS, the riding modes, the white on black LCD instrumentation. And price-wise, according to the uh, Yamaha website, 8,999, so nine grand, which I think is pretty good for a bike of this spec. Uh, the standard bike being 8,199, according to the website. Uh, quick shifter I mentioned, assist and slipper clutch, which explains the light action on the clutch. All sorts of accessories available, including luggage, exhaust, and so on. And the bike comes in several colour schemes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking rubbish. The SP, of course, only comes in this colour scheme. That's one of the things that stands it out as an SP. All right, I'm losing me marbles. It's uh, probably time I jump back on the bike and rode her some more. I just noticed actually walking around, doozy little uh, job they've done on the exhaust here, look. It's got this massive catalytic converter under here, but they've done quite a good job of sort of disguising it with this dressing here, which actually works quite well, I think. Uh, what else about the engine? 
and uh, nice shiny pipes as well. I wonder how long they'll stay like that before they all go blur. <laughs> all right, back on the bike then. So this is going to be an interesting check. Let's see what the turning circle's like on a. Love this dash. The white on black, I think, works. Right. Quick Yui. A really tight turning circle actually. No problem at all. Nice. Right, let's head back to uh, one of my favourite little bits of twisty road in the other direction. I'm loving the way you can grip the tank on this with your legs. It just feels very natural. That's just why I stop here. Let me show you my feet on the deck. There we go. Look, I'm uh, almost flat-footed on both sides. I'm on the balls of my feet, but uh, almost flat-footed. It feels so light when you stop. It's not one of those bikes that you're going to think, oh, I'm going to drop it any moment. This doesn't give you that feeling. Oops. Wow, okay. There's something else I've found. <laughs> the horn is a little bit close to the indicator button. If you look at that, I mentioned before that the switch gear is a bit small. Uh, I've cancelled the indicator a couple of times now and actually hit the horn by mistake. So uh, there you go, I found something I don't like about the bike. <laughs> Mustn't forget to thank my friends up at uh, Brian Gray's Power Bike in High Wycombe for the loan of the bike once again. They're always super helpful up there. Go and uh, check out the showroom if you've not been. They've got loads of uh, accessories as well as masses of bikes. All the current Yamaha range are up there. Speak to Sam, mention my name. I'm sure he'll let you ride some of his demo bikes. I'm sure I'll let you do that without even mentioning my name, to be fair. I love this bit of road, but it would be so much better if it was completely dry. This is such an eager and fun bike, though. It's like a puppy that just wants to please all the time. Pretty much the perfect engine size, I would say, up for real-world riding. There's loads to go there. You're never going to have a problem making a fast overtake. It's not so ludicrously powerful, like its big brother, the MT-10, that you're never going to tap into all the power on the road. I think if I was in the market now for a sporty naked, I'd be very hard pressed to choose between this and the Street Triple. I think, in fact, I would probably go for this, to be honest. Sorry, Tron. It just feels lighter and more agile than the Street Triple, whilst maintaining a lot of the same fun factor. Because of its lightweight and agileness, and also the fact that it's quite narrow, and you're sitting quite high up, I imagine this would be an excellent bike as a commuter. You could filter through traffic, get around town, no problems on this. In fact, if you can only have one bike in your garage because of space or cost or whatever, then uh, this would be a great bike to go for you could have great fun on Sunday Blast and you could use it every day to get to work, no problem at all. Okay, so that's just about it for my uh, first impressions review of the Yamaha MT-09 SP. And, uh, well, you know what I think of the bike. I absolutely love it. It's a real great fun machine. It's got oodles of power. You really don't need any more power than this. Don't take my word for it. Go and have a rider one. The thing is just like a rocket, particularly in A mode. It just flies. And uh, it's agile. Everything about the controls are nice, they're nice and light, it's comfortable, sounds great, handles well. The only thing that uh, lets it down a bit, I think, is the switch gear, which is uh, a pretty minor point, and it's quite small. If you're in, if you've got big hands or big thick gloves, you might hit things by mistake. I've hit, as I mentioned before, the horn instead of the indicator a couple of times, but that's uh, just about, you know, you'll get used to that, that's really not a problem. I think if you can stretch to the SP, if you're in the market for an MT-09, then it's well worth paying that extra 800 quid, because this suspension is lovely on here. So yeah, Yamaha really have brought us some uh, fantastic bikes over the last few years, haven't they? They went through the doldrums a bit about five years ago, and since then they've absolutely come out with some cracky models, and the MT-09 is no exception. A lovely, lovely bike. Really enjoyed riding it. 
Okay, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed that uh, first impressions review. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, then thanks very much for uh, watching the whole review. Stick around till the end. Uh, I try to upload three videos a week. I don't just do bike reviews, but I do things like uh, how-tos in the garage, bits on uh, tips and tricks on maintenance, also do product reviews, and I go out on uh, trips and tours as well. Basically, anything and everything to do with motorcycling, I try and cover it on the channel. It'd be great to have you along. If you want to hit that subscribe button and the little bell, you'll get notified uh, when I post up new videos. I even do live streams once a month as well it'd be great to have you along to one of those okay that's it for now look forward to speaking to you next time until then this has been the missing and fly cheerio